cooking tip. Helen Russell, The Year of Living Danishly, in which she talks about the fact that once she had the role she'd been striving towards, she realized she wasn't actually any happier, just busier. This thought is something that we see again in another reading tip I would like to share with you. A monk's guide to happiness, meditation in the 21st century, Let's dive into what happiness is all about. And in one of the first chapters I read, and I want to read it out loud to you, we live with a constant feeling of racing towards something, but we're not quite sure what that thing is. We go to bed at night and the next morning we get up and start rushing again. Where is this heading? What's the overall aim or purpose? Survival? Putting food on the table, success, enjoyment, love, but for what? The CEO, the prisoner, the busy parent, the monk. We are, we are all seeking the same thing. Happiness and the absence of pain or discomfort. That search for happiness leads us to latch on to things. We look around us and decide what it is we need to be happy. The problem is that when we get something, we pretty soon want something else. That process never stops as things never seem to be enough. It feels that the things we run after are perpetually elusive. And so there's always something more to search for. And the things we run away from never seem to stop chasing us. This struggle is exhausting. It is what we know as stress. And now you know why I'm not only a chief happiness officer, but also a stress and burnout coach. Because if we talk about burnout, if we talk about stress, we talk about the other side of the, of the same coin, you could say. Because in the absence of pain and discomfort, happiness, well, can arise. But if there's too much stress, then we see happiness slipping away. Toxic stress, of course, but because there's also something as positive stress. More on that very soon, but for now, a monk's guide to happiness.